So I've done these processes in the last few builds, and they haven't changed, so I thought I'd add some commentary. For the fretboard, all I'm going to do is do this finishing pass with a 0.3 millimeter step over. And it just goes back and forth and back and forth. The really interesting part is when it's getting to those inlays, which look terrible right now, but once the ball and the milk gets over them, it cleans them up really nicely and all that CA glue is removed. This is a compound radius. I only make compound radiuses. I believe this is something like 16 at the nut and 22 at the last fret. This step over does require quite a bit of sanding afterwards. I wanted to take a moment to talk about my headstock design, in particular the inspiration for it. I was heavily inspired by Minima guitars. The designer uses this circular headstock with a negative space circle in the middle. To my eyes, it's perfect. It is the geometric simplicity that makes it perfect. Here you're relying on simple, minimal geometric lines and curves. You don't have to over-design it or overthink it. Complexity isn't always going to offer you a more beautiful design. So, of course, my immediate reaction when seeing this is, how can I copy it? I played around with the idea of different geometric shapes, but I ended up landing on using my headstock that I've been using for the past few guitars, and I simply added the negative space. The negative space in my headstock is a little deceiving. It's not just a simple two-dimensional cutout, it's three-dimensional, it slopes inward. So while the edge looks very fragile, where it's only two mil, it's actually quite deceiving, it's very thick. It extends outwards almost like a pyramid. So it gives the illusion of fragility, but it's actually quite strong and stiff. And I was really happy when I landed on this design. Again, heavily inspired by Minima guitars. So before I glue on the fretboard, I need to install the side dots. And I don't do these by hand. Instead of having to be very accurate for each side dot, I think there's around 10 of them, I only have to be accurate for one, which is the one on the third fret. So I use a sharp pencil, I measure, I divide, and I create a point. That point is going to be my origin point for the CNC. This is one of those operations where I don't want it to be handmade. There is way too much room for human error when doing something like this, especially if you're relying on your eyes, a sharp pencil, and a ruler. I'm lucky that my CNC has an overhang, so right here, that's the end of the usable workspace. You can see I've clamped my fretboard onto the edge of the sheet metal, and my router bit is able to go beyond the wasteboard. You can see there it goes past it. Some might see this as a design flaw in the CNC machine, but for me it's an advantage. I can clamp something to the edge of that sheet metal and then just run an operation. And again, I don't want this to be handmade. I want the precision of the machine to place those side dots precisely on that center line, exactly between the frets. No eyeballing, no sharp pencil needed. The entire operation is about 27 seconds. It's a peck drilling operation, so the end mill just pokes in, I tell it how deep to go, how long to linger, and then how far up to go. 
Again, 27 seconds to do this, and I only have to be accurate in measuring one dot, the third fret. So I'm gonna glue this up using wood glue. I'm not gonna use epoxy. There's two things I wanted to test with this build. One, I'm using the D tube. So this is a flat sawn piece of mahogany. So how will this D tube handle flat sawn? That's test one. Test two, let's not use epoxy. Let's only use wood glue, meaning the adhesion is only gonna be around the edges of that D tube. The wood glue will not adhere that carbon fiber to the bottom of the fretboard. At least I don't think it will. So this is another test. Is wood glue a good enough adhesion for this D-tube type of assembly? So of course I needed to test this out. I could have easily used epoxy. I chose not to for a couple of reasons, but I just wanted to make sure that this could be done with standard everyday wood glue. This is tight bond two. So I typically will use clamps to clamp a fretboard onto the neck body, but I wanted to try my vacuum bag and it worked out very well. There's only one disadvantage to using a vacuum bag. When you clamp something, you can clean up the squeeze out. If it's in a bag, you cannot clean up the squeeze out. I gotta say, these fretboard blanks from Kimball Hardwoods are fantastic. So this is essentially a baked bird's eye maple or torrified maple, whatever you want to call it. It's got that really cool chocolatey color to it. And when you wet it down, it turns like an amber golden. So I will be finishing this in true oil. So I definitely want to build up a varnish on top of the surface. I'm not interested at all in having any type of oil soak into it. It just needs something on the surface to protect it. And the true oil is great because I can vary the actual thickness of the varnish by applying several coats or fewer coats. So if I want to go for like a satin sheen, I can put around 10 coats. And if I want to go a little bit glossier, I can go 20 coats. So I haven't decided what I want to do with this, but I am going to be using true oil all over this fretboard. It's going to look gorgeous. I love the flame side. It looks so cool. There's not a lot of flame on the top. There is a little bit, a lot of bird's eye, but I love the way the flame looks up the edges. It's so cool. This is mahogany. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. Maybe we'll do a true oil in the back too. I'm not sure. I haven't decided. So the weird thing about this wood was maybe because it's baked or torrified, it was machining a little bit awkwardly and I was getting some tear outs. And I want to say that all the tear out I got could have been avoided. So we got tear out here and here. And I repaired everything. I'm not a fan of repairing wood with dust and super glue. It never comes out right. It looks really weird. So I just actually used chips of wood. So the exact same wood, I carved out chips and glued them in place and then sent it back. And you, you can't tell. 
<laughs> that's really cool about these repairs is that the bird's eye kind of hides the repair. So there's a repair right there, and it just looks like more bird's eye. And there's a repair right here. This one's a little bit more noticeable. But again, from the front, it looks just like bird's eye. So I love that. I, I, it's like working with ebony, you know? Ebony is like the one wood I'll use this, the dust and super glue trick for repairs because you can't tell it's ebony. But this is great if you use chips of the wood to repair anything and it just looks like bird's eye. So really cool, I'm really happy with that. I'm pretty much done with sanding. Well, 90% of the sanding is done on the body. And it looks pretty good too. So we can really see a lot of that curly quilt, whatever it's called, I'm not sure what it's called. Looks pretty good. I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with the finish. Maybe it will be a French polish with a shellac. Maybe it'll be something else. Maybe just nitro, I'm not sure. But the important thing is the sanding is done, which is wonderful, at least 90% of the sanding. So there's the hole in the control cavity for the neck pickup. So in the neck pickup route, you need a wire that goes from the neck pickup to the control cavity, and there it is. Worked out wonderfully. Look at how just perfectly centered that is. So I highly recommend these fretboard blanks from Kimball Hardwoods. I really want to pick up more of these. They need to be worked with a little bit differently. Maybe just because of the bird's eye nature or the torification. So I do have to modify my process just slightly, but that's okay. Um, I do want to work with this wood again. It is just too beautiful. And I love this color. I wish that there was a clear coat that wouldn't yellow the wood. Because this looks gorgeous. When I wet this down, that's the color I want. But if you work with different oils, they tend to color the wood, and I don't want that. So I might just have to spray this. But I want it to be really satiny smooth. I do want it to be protected, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. There's that repair that I did. Everything looks gorgeous. Well, that's all I have for this week. Thanks for watching, and take it easy.